Hello, Ranch Line students. We miss all of you, and we hope that you and your families are all safe and healthy through this COVID-19 crisis. Here's a story read aloud called The Spring Celebration, and it's from our school library. I hope you enjoy listening. The Spring Celebration. This is written by Tina Umferville and Christy Rice, and the illustrations are also by Christy Rice. Miss Scotu woke up on Sunday excited. She hoped that this was the day her people would celebrate the beginning of spring. Miss Scotu was a small, scrawny, red-headed girl. Her name was given to her because of her bright, fiery red hair. Miss Scotu means little fire in the Cree language. She lived in a small village named Brockett. Brockett is in the far north where winters are long and bitterly cold. At the end of the winter, the people in her village looked forward to the first warm Sunday so they could celebrate the new season. Miss Gotu pressed her nose against the cold glass on the window in her cabin. All she could see was fresh snow whirling around in front of her. Miss Gotu was disappointed as she went back to her bed. She would have to wait another week for the spring celebration. No one in the village knew exactly when the celebration would be. That was just the way things were done. The people waited patiently for the weather to decide if it was warm enough to begin spring. Each Sunday after church, Iskotu and her family met with the others and discussed if this was to be the day of the celebration. Iskotu knew that it was not long before spring because there were already signs. Some of the snow had melted during the warmer days. The ice began to crackle when he walked on it, and some of the birds that had flown away for the winter were returning to their northern home. Finally, the chosen day arrived. After church, people went back to their homes and gathered what they needed. The Scotus family packed tea, a tea pail, fish, flour for bannock, and canvas to sit on. The supplies were packed in a box and loaded onto an old wooden sleigh. The Scotu looked forward to playing with all her friends on this beautiful spring Sunday. The celebration was held on an island not far from the small village. The Scotus family walked to the island. Even though it was spring, the lakes were safe because they were still thick with ice. Miss Gotu, her friends, and the dogs ran ahead. Although they were running and having fun, they had to pay careful attention not to run or play on the thin ice. There were holes in the ice made by logs that had drifted into the water before it was frozen. Miss Gotu had fallen through the ice once before. She remembered how cold and scared she had been. She would not make that mistake again. Once the children reached the island, they gathered wood to make cooking fires. It was up to the children to decide where their families would cook the meals. Miss Gotu looked for an open spot where she could see everyone around her. When she found her spot, she did not let anyone take it. Some of the boys tried to wrestle her to the ground so they could take her spot. Miss Gotu was skinny, but she was strong and very stubborn. She did not give up and won in the end. After all the children had picked their spots, they climbed trees and wrestled. They wanted to have fun before it was time to pick berries. When the adults arrived at the island, they began cooking for the feast. Miss Gotu and her friends were told to pick cranberries. The cranberries were very ripe. They had been frozen under the snow all winter and were now ready for picking. Miss Gotu's knees turned red from kneeling on the ground as she picked the cranberries. She loved to squish the berries because they would squirt red juice. Some of the juice squirted on her shirt like red flecks of paint. Miss Gotu thought this was fun. After enough berries were picked, she took them to her mother. The berries were then cooked over the fire and became a delicious dessert. With the smell of bannock and cranberries, Miss Gotu could hardly wait to eat. After tasting her own food, she and her friends ran from fire to fire sampling all the cooking. There were all different kinds of foods at their feast. Some families had caribou meat. Others brought moose meat or fish. There were many types of fish, trout, pickerel, whitefish, and smoked sucker. When everyone was full, they sat around the fires, drinking tea and telling stories. At dusk, everything was packed and put back into wooden sleighs and sacks. The people of the village once again crossed the ice and returned to their homes. 
With warm weather, the ice would eventually break up, and there would be a lot of things a Skotu could not do on the lake until it was completely thawed. The planes carrying mail and supplies could not land on the ice. The village would be cut off from the outside world until the planes could land on the open lake. As Eskotu slept that night, she dreamt of all the good things that spring would bring to the village. There would be eggs in nests, new baby animals, pussy willows, and budding leaves. More importantly, there would be lots of ponds with tadpoles to play with. I'm wondering, can you think about what signs of spring you're seeing outside right now? Look through your windows, go into your yards. Can you tell spring is coming? I hope you enjoyed the story. Take care, everyone.